Nintendo Switch, what is it? Nintendo does things differently. First came the Wii's motion controllers, then we used tablet-style gamepad. Now the Nintendo Switch delivers a portable and home console in one that works well wherever you want to play on the go as well as at home. With the 6.2-inch tablet and two versatile, removable Joy-Con controllers, capable of used solo or split for local two-player multiplayer. While lacking the raw power to produce 4K HDR graphics like its rivals, its innovative design is a surprising hit. The Nintendo Switch launched with its share of issues, but Nintendo has responded quickly to fix the biggest concerns. Nintendo Switch Design As a result of the Switch's dual purpose, it comes with quite a bit of gear. Aside from the Switch and Joy-Con L and on, you get the Switch dock for connecting the console to a TV. There's also a Joy-Con grip, which slots the left and right Joy-Con into it to act as a more traditional controller. Then there are two Joy-Con straps for games that use motion controls, destined to be a blessing for enthusiastic gamers, we don't want another Wii fiasco with players smashing tellies. Finally, you get an HDMI cable and power lead. It's surprising quite how small Nintendo's new flagship machine is. Strip away the dock and the Joy-Con controllers and what you have is a black box no bigger than a mini Android tablet. The Nintendo Switch has a thick bezel around its 6.2-inch capacitive touchscreen. That display size is fine when playing games in portable mode, like a slightly larger PlayStation Vita screen, or perhaps a decent tablet. When in tabletop mode using the kickstand, it's comfortable, but I had to sit closer to play Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and to play your local multiplayer because of the game's frantic nature. The touchscreen's responsiveness is streets ahead of the Wii U gamepad's cheap and soft resistive screen, which often had delayed inputs and was a pain to use. This feels like I'm actually using a tablet. In the hands the console feels incredibly well made, again a far cry from the gamepad's Tonka toy plastic. The metal finish of the Switch coupled with the comfortable, if a little weightless, Joy-Con make this the best console Nintendo has made from an aesthetic perspective, perhaps by any console manufacturer. Despite the Switch's sleek build, the one anomaly is its kickstand. While the console is made from metal, the kickstand is plastic and incredibly thin. The fact that the kickstand can also only allow for one viewing angle is disappointing. Nintendo's reasoning behind this design is that it's taken into account our stupidity. If you attempt to dock the console without closing the kickstand, it'll snap off, without actually breaking, and can easily be reattached. Nintendo warns against constant wear and tear, though. While this seems a smart decision in theory, in the weeks following launch I've only snapped the kickstand off the console once, yet it already fails to sit flush into the back of the Switch. Playing in handheld mode will see the kickstand flap loosely, meaning I have to hold my finger on it to keep the thing in place. With each of these considered decisions, Nintendo always manages one or two glaring omissions. The Nintendo Switch supports Bluetooth 4.1, but not for wireless headphones. Considering the recent big push towards Bluetooth headphones, it's bizarre that there isn't the ability to use them with the Switch. Docking and removing the Joy-Con controllers is easy enough. Simply pressing the button on the back of the controller sees them simply lift off the machine, and they slide easily onto the console's rails, making the satisfying click noise you'll have heard on the Switch's many trailers to let you know they're attached to the unit. However, while the console plays this noise to let you know the Joy-Con is docked, this noise alone doesn't mean the controller is safely attached. There's a separate, mechanical click that should be heard when the controller is locked in place, 